<laughs> Welcome to episode 86 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon, and this episode of Beyond the Brick is brought to you by Brickmania. Brickmania makes quality custom kits from genuine Lego parts and premium third-party add-ons, and there's some really neat stuff that they make over there with their military kits at brickmania.com. And our featured kit of the week is the UH-60 Blackhawk Utility Helicopter. Uh, this helicopter includes four custom minifigures with flak vests and helmets, and it's a very neat design with uh, the gun on the side, and everything is just very detailed with their kits. That's what I love about it. And so if you haven't checked them out, I definitely encourage you to at brickmania.com. I'll have a link to them in the description so you can check out all they have to offer there. Now, our guest this week is Adam Monastori, uh, and you might know him. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I try not to botch his name up too much there. <laughs> it's okay. I, I don't think I did a very good job with his reaction. <laughs> so my apologies to uh, his... Uh, Anyone out there with a Hungarian name like that, my, my Hungarian is not very good. <laughs> uh, but you might know him on Flickr as Rifoli, I'm, and I probably messed that name up as well. <laughs> it's uh, it's Riferofi, actually. Okay, okay. So I'll, I'll let him pronounce the names from now on. <laughs> and... He is uh, 33 years old, but tomorrow is his birthday, so uh, I'd like to give a shout-out like from eight hours. <laughs> everyone here at Beyond the Break. Happy birthday to Adam, and I, I hope you <laughs> get a you. lot of Lego for your birthday as well. <laughs> mm. That would be nice. <laughs> we might, uh, maybe you could put your address in the description, and people could just send you gifts and things if they wanted to. <laughs> yeah, or give you my account information, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he is a FPGA designer, uh, so he's an engineer, and he also contributes to a uh, Lands of Classic Castle over at ClassicCastle.com. We'll be looking at some of his builds there uh, later on in the show, so you'll be able to check those out. And so it's great having you on, Adam. I'm glad you could take the chance to talk with me. Yeah, I, I'm also glad that it worked out because it was not easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the different Adam time zones... And, uh, Germany, so uh, it's it's hard to work out the time zones, but we ended up getting it all to work out, and so it's it's pretty nice. So uh, we we've kind of had a string of international guests from Australia to France, and now Germany. So what's the uh, Lego scene like in Germany? Is there uh, many lugs there? Are you part of a lug? Um, not yet, because I started like a year ago, and uh, it it uh, I realized that there are some lugs. Uh, somewhere here in the not near to the city I live, but uh, um, there are some in Bavaria. So I will I I need to have a look at them. So yeah, but uh, <laughs> now I I'm a lone wolf for the time <laughs> being. <laughs> yeah, you have to make sure to check them out. How big are there? A lot of uh, like countrywide logs, or is it mostly local ones? How does that usually work? Mm, I can I can give you a, a right and answer yeah. <laughs> to this question. <laughs> it's it kind of depends probably. Just that you, have, but, you haven't checked uh, them all out yet. I think there are some regional ones and some some clo uh, global uh, country -like, uh, wide ones, but. Uh, this is also a new new theme for me, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't want to say something stupid. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I understand. That's fine. So uh, you're you're getting more acquainted with the the community over there. I hope so. <laughs> so, are there how many Lego stores are there in Germany now? Do you know? I'm trying to. Are there? They've, I don't they, know how that many was one of the first are, places but... they put Lego stores, wasn't it in Germany? I believe so. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I know that there's a there's a Lego store in Nuremberg. Uh, it's like 20, 20 kilometers from here. I okay. I check check the the shop regularly, but there there must be a lot of them throughout the country. So, but 
it, it doesn't make any difference if there are many, because <laughs> I won't uh, travel some hundred miles just to mm -hmm. get to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unless there, unless there wasn't one closer, you might do, might do it if you that was like the only one. But yeah, but if you got one near you, that works good. There's a legal land in, I think, in Ulm. Which is a okay, city yeah. in in the southern part of Germany. It's like two hundred kilometers from here. But I haven't been there either. So my kids are getting old enough to make to to. So so a visit to the Legoland would be fun for them mm -hmm. also, not <laughs> only for me. <laughs> That'd be good. So you you can kind of experience more of the builds, and they can do the the different. Uh, rides and what, whatever the things for the younger kids there, so that'd be fun. Yeah, sure. Because mm -hmm. yeah, well, um, I visit visit the, sh the the Lego shop only occasionally because I do most of my I I order most of the parts through Bricklink, and, uh, and I buy occasionally some some sets. And I always uh, my my excuse is always oh it's for the kids I mean, <laughs> of my five x s. So you're just you're saving it up for the kids, obviously. I mean, but you're you're just yeah, using, oh, oh, they start sure. using it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you don't want it to just sit there with nobody using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, my son is getting old enough to uh, so so he plays with Lego, but. Um, He's also still in the, the, the Duplo business. And uh, my daughter is, uh, so my son is five years old and my daughter is three years old. Mm, they, they're getting there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so we might, we might see some builds pop up from them sometime soon on your Flickr feed <laughs> as they start to build. <laughs> well, uh, if I left my, one of my uh, creation on my desk, and I go to work, it could uh, it could possibly be improved by the end of the day, <laughs> because my, uh, usually my daughter starts to rebuild it or add something to it. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. They, they can kind of add to it. That's always neat. So you mentioned that you got into the uh, Lego building about a year ago. How did that uh, journey work for you? Did you play with it as a kid, or was it something you discovered more as an adult? Yeah, we played a lot as, with Lego as, as kids. We had some building parties uh, at the neighbors because uh, we, the, one of the neighbors had a lot of sets, a lot of bricks, so... Mm -hmm. The guys from the neighborhood just uh, gathered in uh, at, a, at this specific neighbor, and we built for hours. It was really nice, but then, as I turned so 15, 14, 15, I don't know, um, I I quit uh, building with Lego. But uh, as my after the birth of my son, I started to. Extend my collection with the usual excuse. Yeah, the kids will <laughs> play with it. And but uh, it's, my wife uh, pretty soon realized that uh, yeah, only a, a fraction of of the the bricks will land by by my son, and most of them will be used by me for for now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that seems like that happens a lot too. You you can only uh, you can only um, keep them guests in there for so long before they figure out who it's really for. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a, on a tight budget for every month. I have like twenty euros to to uh, to spend, mm -hmm. but uh, I <laughs> my my wife. Uh, also uh, bought some some friend sets for my daughter, and she also started to to build custom houses or and stuff like that. Uh, so not my daughter, my wife. Okay. And uh, <laughs> then she realized that these uh, twenty euros uh, are well, 
not much <laughs> if you if you plan to be, build something big sure. and it and kids there's a uh, I, I would not suggest you to tell your wife you should uh, that she should uh, build with Lego because uh, you will end up with having no bricks because your wife uh, steals uh, all of them and uh, you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so so it went from being against it to now she takes all your bricks and you can, you don't ever have a chance to build anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, the, I think uh, I I can manage it. So she she is not so active now. So I can s secretly borrow the 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 bricks mm -hmm. again. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it works out in the end. So, how did you discover the online community then? After you kind of got back into building, were you just looking online at builds? Well, I have a very good friend and a colleague of mine, uh, and he he's a collector. So um, he collects Lego playsets like like nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a yeah. Uh, he has a uh, unopened sets in his uh, basement, and he he hopes that his wife will never go down in the basement because then he will be killed. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he 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 uh, he told me that there's there are some some Lego related blogs like this uh, cl uh, classiccastle.com and the brother brothers brick, brick and. Uh, I started to to follow the blogs, especially the this um, yearly uh, colossal castle context on on CC. And uh, after the second year following the uh, these blogs, um, I I thought my, to myself, oh, I could do something like this, or maybe even better. Who knows? So I. Uh, Participated in the last uh, uh, castle contest, and yeah, it was a great experience. I my entries uh, for this one. This is the weapon seas, and there's the the brewery. And, okay. Uh, I think it turned out quite well. Yeah, yeah, those are really neat models, and actually, uh, we'll talk about a couple of them here. Let me. I'll show this one uh, first. This is your uh, Dragon build here. Um, <laughs> this is, yeah, the one you've got it right there behind you. You can see the Dragon. <laughs> there you it go. It was quite challenging to do a Dragon in the small scale, but it's it's he he is pretty a pretty one. Yeah, yeah, that turned out. So that's like all brick built, right? That Dragon. So you yes. didn't use any of the. Um, no, no. Uh, you know, uh, maybe the wings are a bit bulky, but mm -hmm. these are the the official uh, Lego ones. So, but there are only some some plates and other small parts. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's neat the way you did that. I like how you you did that brick built and then. Uh, another th the thing that captured my attention with this build was the way you did the roof. I thought it was really cool, kind of stacking the the red tiles um, with the with the brown under it goes really well together. And yeah. this is actually like a modular build, right? So you, there's different rooms inside and stuff. Um, I can try to show. Okay, you. <laughs> see, see if you can show, see if it doesn't fall apart. Hopefully here. <laughs> So there you go. You got a little display <laughs> because it's it's heavy. I can't hold it for more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you can see it there. So it's but the I can show you the the roof. It's quite easy. It has some some hinge plates here, so it is connected to this part, and it can be attached again using some 
some bars. Okay, nice. So, okay, that's how you did it. That's that's a really cool idea there. I like that. And uh, this is the interior. You can remove the the whole floor to to gain access to the lower part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chimney has two um, round bricks that can be pushed, and one of them uh, turns on the light brick here. Um, there, I think yeah, I think I, don't I have push it again this. there. I could. Yeah. Well, there's a fireplace. Okay. In yeah, it's... there's a fireplace in there, so it's it's hard to see from the the shot here, but yeah, it lights up in there. An another van use uh, turns on the one in in the weaponsmith's shop. Okay, nice. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it's really neat how you made it modular like this. You don't see a lot of a lot of castle builds that have this kind of almost like a, a town city kind of layout where you you make the buildings modular. That's nice. And um, yeah, okay, the light brick is missing here because I uh, use it for another build. Mm -hmm. So it, this is where the blacksmith uh, works. There's a, I don't know how you, uh, what the proper name of this thing to make oh, the airflow. Oh, okay, flow. okay, yeah. But it's also functional, so you can imitate uh, oh, the use nice. of it. Oh, so nice. It actually acts like it's blowing out air and stuff. Yeah. You can, like, make it function. Exactly. <laughs> Very and cool. Also, there is the basement, which is also the, the home of the dragon. Because he's also it, it 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 is not only a pet, but it also boosts the fire of the forge, and uh, mm -hmm. I used some other dragon prototypes, but uh, they were just too big to fit in the base into the basement. So you had to make it kind of smaller to fit fit in the basement yeah. and work out with the rest of the build. Okay, yes, that. that's nice. And it all fits back together like that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this was my first uh, big build, so I used to plan. I I, I took the time to plan it. I, as you said, I'm I'm an engineer, so I used uh, this Microsoft Visio. I don't know if you familiar with it. It's um, it's a draw tool for technical stuff. So I um, I used it to design the wooden frame of this. Oh. Because there are some plates uh, and tiles which are, uh, which has been rotated by 18 uh, degrees. But it, it became quite uh, solid, so it, it won't fall, f fall apart. Okay, that's that's really cool. So you actually, uh, that's something I was wondering is if uh, your your with your engineering job, um, how much that kind of worked into your Lego building, and obviously you uh, you use much. it to <laughs> really good extent there to to design the parts or not not really the parts but the, the builds there. Uh, that's really cool. So, yes, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, thanks. Thanks for showing that. And that's, yes, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about some of the other builds behind you now as well. Uh, you might be able to show some of those. Um, let's see here. The another build I wanted to mention was your. Uh, this is the blacksmith shop, I believe. Or yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh no no no! So, this is uh, or, no the. Uh, weaponsmith shop was the we weaponsmith. Okay, that's what I, the and weaponsmith shop. This is actually a, a brewery where you can remove the walls. I'm I haven't used it, for <laughs> yet, so I'm not sure if I can do it without breaking it. The walls do come off, though. <laughs> ah, okay, I I got it now. So, yeah. So here is the brewing kettle, or I don't know how the proper name of it, and mm -hmm. uh, it used to yeah brew the beer. There's the basement with an elevator, which can be 
which is also functional. Oh, nice. So you can, can move it up and down like that? Yep. Very cool. Makes it easier and to move move everything around in the brewery. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, there are this part can also be removed to gain access to the uh, barrels. I don't know how much uh, you yeah, can yeah, see I mean, about it. You can you can see it a little bit of it there. Yeah, down down under there. Well. Yeah, that's about it. And this is the, the tower of it to mm -hmm. store the ingredients. Yeah. Um, I can't tilt it because it has some some uh, round uh, some some plates, round plates. And if I show you then it they for they will fall. <laughs> They'll fall out, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> So this is sort of like an, uh, somewhat of a modular build, like the last one as well. Um, yes. A, a little bit. How how did you decide to start building in that kind of way instead of a more like you, did did you always want to build so you could kind of take it apart and show the different parts of it? Uh, yes, because uh, the idea was that uh, some maybe anytime soon my kids could play with it, so um, it's for maximum. Playability design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be cool <laughs> if your kids could play with it like that. Um, let's see then. So I think another. This is the next build I wanted to talk about was your. Uh, this is actually a series of builds that you did recently, and kind of also how I. Uh, first discovered your work, and this is your Monty Python. <laughs> Builds that are really cool, and any anyone who has seen the movie or seen some of these scenes, like this is the Black Knight, which is I think one of the more famous scenes, and uh, one of the one of the really cool scenes from the movie. And so, uh, you made how many Monty Python scenes did you make all in all? Uh, uh, I think eight, eight of them. There okay. are eight of them. Well, the the whole thing uh, started. As on yeah, in one night I, I uh, tried to catch up with the other builders from LCC, and I browsed Gary Brooks' uh, photo stream, who was under the name uh, Gary the oh boy, uh, Gary the unpronounceable. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I can pronounce his name. or something. <laughs> yes, like yes, okay. yes, exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> I commented on one of his uh, uh, build. And he replied with uh, a Monty Python quote, he bravely ran away. And I, I instantly realized that, that, that the quote was from the, from the movie. So I started to look at this, the scenes. And in the end, I, I watched the, uh, the whole movie. <laughs> and then I, I thought, hmm, I could do a series of sets, like like a real product line of them. So as I uh, watched the movie, I made some notes which scenes should be should be included. And uh, yeah, it, the first one I made was the the back uh, black line. Mm -hmm. And um, you can see that that is the first one because um, it's a bit more. Complex or uh, uses more bricks. It has a, a nicer base, a little stream going through, and some 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 plants foliage. So, but then I, I realized or I thought this, this won't won't look like an actual uh, Lego set where the base is not so sophisticated or they don't use uh, they don't use so many parts. Or mix so sure. detailed. So the other builds are. I I try to keep them as simple as possible, but having them also detailed. So this one is the black knight. <laughs> uh, maybe you have some some the other photo, which is uh, an example of how to play with it. Where you can remove his limbs. Actually, on the the set, the 
there's a I think the piece count is 126 plus four there are the, the, the plus four are the four limbs of course <laughs> yeah and you made a little comic here with uh, the the scene cut from the movie as it progresses <laughs> there aren't really any limbs left there so <laughs> I thought that was cool. Uh, you made the comic as well, and yeah, it's uh, like you were saying. You, you you can see here how he tried to make the uh, the make it look like an actual set with the the ages, the set number. Um, but yeah, there's the 126 plus four. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, he's got uh, everything on there. The little mini figs in the corner, just like a a regular set and everything. So that's that's really cool how you did that. Uh, thanks. <laughs> The, the next one is the the witch trial because it's I think this kind of deductive reasoning should be taught in schools because it's it, it, it couldn't be better <laughs> so we have <laughs> we have the skills here and with the the duck and the witch I made made a nose for her. Like the peasants did. Which oh, okay. Is a neck bracket and the the clip, a plate with a clip, and there's a there's the nose attached. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's I great job with that scene as well. I think you captured <laughs> it <laughs> captured it really nicely and uh, did a really detailed job with those. Yeah, I tried this one to to keep. A bit simpler, so there is, but I think it, it works out also well. Yeah, I will I will do it. Mm -hmm. The next one was, of course, one of the funniest scenes: the French castle or the, or the <laughs> French controlled castle with the French taunter. And we have here some. Some other uh, characters like Sir Lancelot, Sir Galahad, and also there are some some of the squires or servants. I'm not sure what they were with the backpacks. Yeah, the the big giant backpacks there. <laughs> and of of course the coconuts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome the way you did the castle there. That's yeah the the, the French guy on top and everything you captured that so perfectly. <laughs> And if you if you do the the castle, then there is also another set that comes instantly, which is the Trojan rabbit. <laughs> yep. According to Sir Bedivere's cunning plan, it also has an entrance to it, but uh, it's it's useless because it won't be used anyway. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> very nice rabbit there. <laughs> but actually, I I tried to to build the the scenes like they appeared in the the, the actual movie. So sure, like yeah. the, the the rabbit design. How how did you decide what scenes to build? Was there you you said you uh, you researched it deeply by watching the movie? Again. Yes, it, <laughs> so, uh, it, it took me there... sometimes. <laughs> sometimes so <laughs> a, a lot of research. You had to watch it probably two or three times to, to get it get it all down. <laughs> yeah, but, there were um, many scenes that I I I watched over and over again because like like my one of my favorites is uh, Sir Robin's Tale. With the three-headed knight, mm -hmm. this one is actually not flat like like a minifig, so it has something like a belly. It oh, has yeah. some 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 uh, uh, slopes, mm -hmm. curved so slopes, and uh, as it, in the description of this set, I wrote that there are some, uh, there are two uh, sound bricks included. Uh, because the the minstrels uh, think about uh, Sir Brave Bird, uh, Bold Robin's uh, adventures, and it's 
these lyrics are, are golden. <laughs> you are familiar with this scene. Yeah. <laughs> That's another nice scene there. And yeah, it's, it's kind of, like you said, you went for the simpler bass play, but you get the great minifigs there, and it's still really neat. Yeah, there was also a 3-4 for, for this scene, but uh, I had to reuse it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Well, these sets are actually on uh, Kuso, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, yes, they are. This this was not my original intention, but uh, many many people asked about it, so I I thought, oh, why not? I have the the images already. I have the descriptions, so it was not. It, it didn't take much time for me to to create the project, and uh, to my surprise, it has been published. I, I thought it was it will be instantly rejected, but I don't know what happened there. <laughs> well, if you if you haven't voted for it yet, you can go over and vote for it right now. I'll I'll make sure to have a link to that in the description so uh, you can check it out and make sure you vote for it. Uh, there's 339 votes right now. I've supported it, so it's a really cool project. Oh, thanks. <laughs> definitely, definitely make sure to check that out and get, give some support over there. Because that'd be really cool. It'd be it'd be cool to see what would happen if it hit ten thousand votes. <laughs> I I have no illusions, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you never know the way the way Kusa works. Uh, any anything can happen. And uh, I al almost forgot about the catapult, which is part of the French castle, with some bulls. Oh, nice. <laughs> because you, you shouldn't uh, underestimate the power of uh, cows used, uh, ca that can be used for uh, making a uh, siege, uh, sieging army to stop. That's for sure. Never, never underestimate the power of cows. <laughs> yes. Very and cool. There, there are some, some kni knights of, of knee, who, who say knee, with some nice shrubbery mm -hmm. and I think Lego uh, Lego should uh, publish or uh, uh, create this one or this one too but this this is a real money maker because it can be sold as the set the the knights who say who say me and another set under the slightly changed number the knights who till recently said me if you are familiar with the scene. Yes. <laughs> so there's a big money maker for him there. You're you're already giving them marketing yeah. ideas for it. <laughs> Saved them the trouble. They just, they just have to start selling the set now. Yeah, it's I think it's a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. The next one. The the rabbit of Kerbenok. The killer rabbit, including Sir Sir Bors. Oh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Yep. Um, I also had the other ones, but uh, the, the other figures, but um, I made only one one of each, so I had to distribute them for for showing. Yeah, yeah. And of course, if you have the killer rabbit, then you need. <laughs> The holy hand grenade of Antioch, <laughs> and also the the book of armaments. Um, I I haven't found uh, Brother Maynard. I think he has been eaten by the black monster of Ark. Oh no! <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> you, should, you should try to get him back sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah. The problem is that that my desk is is a mess. I it uh, it often takes me quite a t some time to to find or find again some pieces. So mm -hmm. I think he is somewhere down there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you'll find him eventually. So uh, out of out of all those Monty Python ones, which one is your favorite? Do you have a favorite build from them? Um. I think <laughs> the 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 rabbit and the holy hand grenade is it's one of okay. the funniest scenes, but it's not easy to choose because I also like the 
the three-headed knight. Yeah. It was fun to build. And, yeah, yeah. there is no actual favorite. Mm-hmm. You, you, you like them all equally. That's good. So yeah. <laughs> you don't show favoritism towards any of them. <laughs> no, no. I think they are all fine. And there, there are some some details in every set that can be can be loved. And mm-hmm. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for taking the time to show us all those. That's really cool. And... Do you have any uh, projects planned for the future then? Maybe more Monty Python sets or any other medieval uh, classic castle sets or anything like that? Um, yeah, there there have been some complaints about some missing scenes from <laughs> from the Holy Grail, like the castle entrex and the Bridge of Death. Mm-hmm. So I think I, I, I will make them also. <laughs> Th- those Maybe will be coming they're... sometime soon. Uh, it's easy, uh, It's not so easy to tell because uh, I plan to to finish a mock uh, a creation that is that was sitting for about six months on my desk because I try to react to other builders' uh, creations. I read the. the the forum uh, under uh, CC, and if I read something interesting, or I, I I see a, a creation uh, that I like, and I have a potentially humorous idea, <laughs> then I will react to it and build something for it. So I, it happens all the time that I got interrupted and. Uh, the bigger projects need to to wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but There's just so many good things out there to build. You, you can't stick to one thing for too long. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> and also this, um, the, the Lens of Classic Castle, there's a, such a great community. So, and it, it, we also had some, some builds that uh, shared, for example, the same story or part of the story so it's nice to do to do something with the other builders not only you by yourself so I, I find it really nice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah do, does uh, lanes of classic castle do they do many like collaborative like builds at conventions or anything like that like I know you've got like uh, euro breaks and uh, things like that to do those collaborations does LCC do that well, uh, uh, Gary Brooks and some other uh, builders from RCC like Mark Erickson and mm-hmm. his brother Stephen mm-hmm. and some other great builders uh, went to Brick Fair Virginia and had some many, many uh, great creations to show. So they do, but... Uh, the problem is that uh, US is so far away from here. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would have loved to to uh, go there, but uh, it's it was not an option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I understand. It's definitely hard. I mean, even I mean, I'm in the US, and even getting to other conventions within the US is tough for a lot of people. So, uh, it can it can definitely be hard to um, get around to them, but. If you could ever make it over here, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm sure it would be <laughs> awesome to have you at Brick Fair. Everybody would love that. <laughs> yeah, especially me. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. You get to, get to meet a lot of the other builders from LCC. and yeah, yes, especially... it, it would be nice to meet them personally because, uh, you know, you comment on their uh, creations or maybe uh, mirror them, but uh, it's not like a real conversation. I mean, it's like a real conversation, but... Not in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like uh, Mark Erickson, Steve, and his brother Stephen. They're just incredible castle builders with all the and all the all the builds they're able to put out. Uh, I know, especially like that. I think he did a lot with the um, like land, lands of classic castle contest or the the stuff stuff like that colossal castle contest, and it's and really the, awesome uh, to see those. 
they particip participated in the Iron Builder Challenge uh, mm -hmm. last time, so it was all kinds of awesome. Yeah. What they did. And, <laughs> and uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Gary Brooks uh, was kind enough to help me to correct my Hanglish in the description of the of these Monty Python sets. So special thanks go to go to him. To and, that's good. Uh, he's he's also a really great builder. He had also some some uh, uh, some really nice uh, scenes that he presented at Brick Fair, like some some. Um, some scenes from Egyptian. Uh, yes, yeah, I think I remember seeing some of those online. Yeah, he's he's a very good builder. I follow him on Flickr as well, and yeah, it's good that that's good that he helped you out too as well. <laughs> so it's always nice when builders can help each other out like that. Yeah, because it was uh, it was his comment that triggered the whole uh, uh, set of these uh, mm -hmm. holy Korea related <laughs> stuff. So. Um, okay, I just forgot forgot what I wanted to say, but uh, anyway, so <laughs> that, <laughs> it was nice to, nice to to have uh, his help. <laughs> yeah. So, are are there any other conventions you're hoping to make it to sometime besides Brick Fair, or is that kind of uh, where a lot of the LCC members go? So that's the main one you want to make it to. There are probably other uh, big ones, but uh, I only know this one because uh, the 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 RCC builders mentioned this one mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is very cool. And uh, Matthew usually makes it there every year, so uh, he he always he can always fill me in. I haven't been able to make it there yet. I hope to make it one of these years, <laughs> but uh, he he can always fill me in with what goes on there, and it it sounds like it's really neat. So. Definitely have to make it there sometime. Yeah, because the problem is with uh, posting your images. Uh, you you can't post hundred images of one build because no one would would look look at all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, if you build something complicated, then there are some angles or subtle details that might be overlooked at the first glance on from from one angle. So it would be nice to see the, the creations in live. So yeah, they're they're always better in person. I, I yep. can mention it's just so awesome to go around and you can talk to the builder as you look at it, and <laughs> that's really neat. Yeah, for sure. Now I think we'll uh, finish out here then with um, what would be your dream Lego set. I don't know if uh, obviously it'd be really cool if they started making the Monty Python <laughs> sets, <laughs> but I didn't know. Is, is there any other uh, builds that you've always thought are really cool, or some theme, or something that you've wanted them mm -hmm. to release? Dream set like an actual set or a set that doesn't exist yet? Um. Either one, it can be, <laughs> and anything that you would really like them to make. Yeah, my my all-time favorite is the the camouflaged outpost of the forest okay. man. It was I I actually had this one, and it's a really nice set. I I don't know why, but it's it was so great because as a kid, it was so nice to to build it up and tear it down, build it up again. Play with the figures and uh, and I use this out, uh, outpost or, or hideout to store my M and M's or Smarties or stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's the reason. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the outpost is a really cool set. Um, all all those um, you know, those that whole line was really neat. I've always yeah. really liked that and. Yeah, those those that set especially though was really good. So I can understand how that'd be your favorite. But um, I think my dream set is always the next build that I I going to to make, or the the one after that because it's it's quite complicated to f focus on only one build, and uh, if you order something like Bricklink. 
you usually order for the current one. But then you see, oh, there are some nice bricks th that I could use in the next one. Or we, and you end up with a huge amount of bricks with the same, uh, having the same budget, which is then split. And then you have your, your order uh, arrives. You start to use the bricks, and you can use only half of them. And then you have to order again something <laughs> because you have <laughs> some bricks only f used f in the next one. And mm -hmm. <sighs> it just keeps building up. Yeah, yeah life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> All these extra bricks, you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it happened a lot that I, I tried to use a technique to to accomplish something and then I realized I could do it much much more easier and I I have some some bricks that I don't I can't use for anything now but I think I will have to open a brickling shop but it no it it won't be good <laughs> <laughs> that's usually the, the kind of like last ditch effort uh, if you have way too many bricks from buying them for so long you just start opening up a shop where people can buy them <laughs> yeah yeah but the problem I'm, I'm afraid that uh, you know you have to build up your stock and you if I start to buy other sets to part out or I don't know I will end up using them and not selling them, and <laughs> I go bankrupt. Yeah, that would not be good. We wouldn't want that to happen. So, <laughs> but then we'll try not to make that happen. Then, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can, it does take a while. I know to to really build up the parts and everything on Bricklink. So you got you got to be able to do that before you can start selling a lot of stuff. Yeah, but I think I. I have the, I call it the the critical amount of bricks, which is, which which are used to to mm. make some something really nice and big scale. So, I think I'm fine now. And as you, as you have seen, I have some one year old creations still intact. And this means for every beard, I have to order more and more. And if any time soon I start to take them apart, I will. I can then. I, I will be able to to build something big or even bigger than these ones. Yeah, yeah. If you if you take them apart, then you'll have a lot more pieces. So that's yeah, that'd work out perfect. And <laughs> that's yeah, really but, cool. Uh, if if only sorting wasn't weren't that. That boring. <laughs> Maybe I, I have already done it, but yeah, yeah. I'm too lazy. <laughs> That's I, I think a lot of people kind of look at sorting that way. It's it's a lot of work. You got to be able to sit down and <laughs> do it um, for for a while. But uh, yeah. in the end, I think a lot of people find it's worth it as well, though. So <laughs> it it's a lot easier to find the bricks. Yeah, maybe I will try this sometimes. Sometime, sometime very soon, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely have to try that. <laughs> well, uh, well, I think that about wraps it up for us. It was great having you on the show, Adam, and I'm I'm so well, glad. Thank you, you could... for having me. Yeah, no problem. I'm so glad you could join me here, and I'll make sure to put a link to uh, his all the builds we talked about in the, in the description, as well as his Kuso project. Make sure you go over and vote as soon as possible. Tell all your friends, spread the word, and help people hear about the Monty Python Kuso project, and I'll make sure to have a link to that in the description. And if you want to keep up to date with everything we're doing here at Beyond the Brick, uh, you can just hit subscribe right on the YouTube page. It's really simple. Uh, it's totally free to you, and you'll get all our latest videos in your subscription feed on YouTube, so you won't miss anything we post here at Beyond the Brick. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next